Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, it's homecoming week for us, which is a big deal for campus and for uh, all of our alums that have uh, have opportunity to come back this weekend. Um, as I told our team, you know, our job is to to go out and, and, and put a product on the field that our alums can be proud of this weekend, and you know, we'll, we'll work hard to do that. Um, you know, Michigan poses another tremendous challenge for us. They're a team that's uh, obviously coming in ranked. Um, they have a top 10 defense. Uh, they've been uh, running the ball very effectively the last, especially the last three games. And, you know, for us, uh, our challenge will be to, you know, find a way to contain their run game and then uh, uh, manage to uh, attack a, a very aggressive defense. You know, they're well coached with Coach Harbaugh and his coaching staff, and we expect to, to get their best. Um, you know, I'm still seeing the effort out of our guys. Uh, every time we come out to practice, there hasn't been a, a question for me of the effort, but I just haven't seen the corrections that we have to make on a daily basis uh, translate on Saturdays for us. And that's the disappointing thing for me um, because these kids really work hard and, and they haven't translated to victories on Saturday. Uh, but we'll, we'll continue to put the work in. Our guys continue to come in. You know, we kind of changed our schedule up a little bit yesterday in terms of uh, we didn't practice. We had a really uh, extensive walkthrough to, again, put the, the previous game to bed and then introduce some of the uh, new things going into this week's game plan and this week's schedule. Um, we'll need a great week of practice, uh, and I, I expect to get that from our guys. Um, this week's game captains will be Keandre Jones, Marcus Lewis, and Javon Leak. And with that, I'll open it up to questions. Mike, what's the update on uh, Piggy, and uh, how will that impact uh, who plays on Saturday? Yep. Um, you know, Piggy is in, on a limited schedule for us today. Um, you know, he's what we would call limited. And so, obviously, Josh will take the the reps with the first team guys and Tyler DeSue will serve kind of as the second team guy until we can uh, get more information. You know, it's my expectation is that Piggy will get better as the week goes along. Um, there was nothing structurally wrong um, other than the, uh, there was a little hyper extension there. And so what we'll have to do is see how he feels as we get through this week. Um, today and Wednesday are really big work days for us. And so we'll see how much we can get out of Piggy. Uh, when he comes out to practice today, but uh, we expect him to be available. Um, but going into today's practice, Josh will uh, will take the first team reps along with Tyler Dessou with the second team reps. Coach, could you discuss the de the challenges their defense uh, poses? Uh, guys like Lasco, Magone, uh, 29 and 44, their ability to rush the passer. What sort of pressure does that put on the O-line? Um, you know, the O-line for us, and I've been, and I said this Saturday, I thought I've seen us take some steps forward as an offensive line, um, you know, some of the, the meaningful work that, that, that the young players got due to injury and then due to us playing them, we're starting to see some of the fruits of it. Um, again, Michigan is a top 10 defense. Don Brown does a tremendous job on that side of the ball with uh, the way they coach, their pressure. Um, you know what you're going to get. They're going to play man coverage. They're going to have more numbers in the box for you to block. Uh, they try to create the one-on-one -on -one matchups up front, and again with their front seven uh, between their inside interior linebackers, number seven. You know the two defensive ends are both really active players. You know 97 and 19 are really active. Number two, uh, again a, a twitchy interior player. Um, they pose a great challenge, but I mean our guys come to the play come to play at Maryland because of these opportunities to play against the best and we'll definitely see one of the better fronts this weekend and um, it's a great challenge but I think our guys will be up to the task. Um, where is Josh now compared to where he was last week and do you expect him to be able to go in a I guess significant capacity this weekend? Um, again obviously with the time off and you know having only played limited reps Saturday I, I feel like uh, he's better um, based off of yesterday he feels a lot better um, this week will be about building the confidence, uh, getting back out there and, and seeing them operate the system and, and, and be able to operate it with uh, you know, his, his full ability. Um, so we'll get a chance to see today. Today is really the first day that we'll be out there. So I'm looking forward to see what he looks like today. Coach, uh, Michigan at homecoming, not the typical opponent that a, a team would have. Uh, did you 
have any input, or did you find out how you ended up with playing Michigan, a team like that, uh, at homecoming? I mean, I mean, we, we're going to play whoever's on our schedule. You know, our administration dictates uh, when those homecoming games are. I mean, I don't think there is a typical homecoming schedule. Um, you know, for us, it's the best opportunity for us is this week playing Michigan, and it happens to be homecoming. So whether it was homecoming or our next game, we've got to kind of do what we need to do on the football field. As I said, homecoming is for our alums that are coming back to campus. It's not really for us in the current state as a program. So, um, you know, I had nothing, to, no input on it. It was part of our scheduling. Um, I'm not a guy that complains about it. Um, I, we're going to play whoever shows up uh, on our schedule when it's scheduled to, to be played. Hey, Coach, uh, what factors into maybe the decrease in pass rush the past couple of weeks, and, and how do you try to find the balance between bringing extra pressure and not leaving your secondary exposed? Um, I think it's game planning. You know, there's some games you go into it where your uh, plan asks for you to try to bring the extra pressure. You know, last week we faced a, a really big offensive line that, um, you know, I think trying to rush the passer, they, they made a point that they were going to run the football. So for our guys to get in the pass rush mode would not have been a good, uh, good thing for us, even though when we didn't, we still gave up a bunch of yards rushing. Um, so what we've got to do is try to find a way to make sure we're gap sound. I mean, um, to me, we've got to stop the run. And our defense is going to be built to always stop the run first. Uh, again, Michigan comes in, a team that's the last three weeks has really run the ball really well. We've put it on film that we struggled last week, um, maintaining our gaps because we had enough guys in the gaps, but we weren't in the gaps we needed to be in. So uh, we got to get that corrected, which we'll work to get done this week. I'm Mike, to follow up on that, obviously Michigan in this game last week uh, really were, you know, ran, ran the ball really well. Um, with, with the size issue that presented itself last week, have you thought about maybe getting a couple of the younger guys who have that size or, or their lack of experience sort of negates the, the, the issue of having enough bulk up there? Um, you know, we're at three forefront, so from an interior standpoint, I mean, there's very few options for us uh, besides the guys that have played. Last week, you know, Tank Booker played his first game or first game since one of the earlier games because of his size and going into the game. But, you know, for us on the edge with guys like Keandre and Shaq, um, you know, we've played everybody we have over there uh, to, uh, to set the edge. And, um, you know, we're going to continue to, I think, uh, like I said, we, we've, we have enough guys, but we've got to make sure we have the gap integrity that we need to make sure that we can stop the run. And, I, you know, I expect them to try to run the football, and we'll work hard this week to make sure that the gap integrity comes back into our defense. We haven't given up that type of rushing yards, even against some really good rushing offenses. So um, to me, I'm hoping that that's not the case, and we'll get it corrected. And just follow up, how did, how did Tank do in his first game? Yeah. I mean, we thought he played well. I mean, we got him maybe 15 snaps. And, you know, what we were asking him to do is, again, attack blocks up front to keep those guys off the second level linebackers to allow us to make tackles. I thought he played OK for his first game. How has Terrence Davis looked to you since coming back? And what does it mean to have, you know, that leadership back on the offensive line? Yeah, it was good to get it was good to get Terrence back this week. I thought Terrence played pretty well, as I said, the one bright spot. Um, for us coming out of that game, watching the film was that our offensive line seems to be making some strides in our ability to to block the block the run up front and protect our quarterback a little better. So uh, obviously, getting Terrence back and his experience allows us to move some other guys around. And you know, I've seen us make some strides on the offensive line, and his leadership, because of the amount of time he's played, uh, really helps us up front. Um, this is what was we talked about being better against Indiana, but when you go down early, if it's 14-0, I mean, what, what would you like to see from your team at that point, and, and how do you solve kind of the ability to come back uh, from a deficit? Well, I mean, obviously, what you want to see is you do not play to the score. Like, we shouldn't know it's 14-0. I mean, we don't want to watch the scoreboard. We want to play every play as an individual game and then try to do your best and then worry about the scoreboard at the end. So. You know, I thought we took steps forward uh, against Indiana, but I thought we took steps back last week against Minnesota. And, uh, you know, the consistency of understanding that that's the way you have to play. 
I mean, you're going to face adversity in the game. There's going to be good things that happen where you got to keep playing, and there's going to be bad things that happen. You've got to keep playing. And to me, we just keep trying to um, hammer home that philosophy and that standard that, you know, it doesn't matter what the score is in the first quarter. What matters is what the score is in the last quarter. And, you know, I didn't think we did a great job of that last week, and we'll continue to coach our guys through that. Coach, there's obviously a lot of rotation along the line during the games too, but what factored into uh, Ellis getting the start at center instead of Johnny Jordan on, on Saturday? I mean, practice during the course of the week. We want to create competition. We want to play the best players. Uh, I think anytime you create competition, it makes you better. Uh, Johnny played a lot of plays for us as if he was a starter. There was no difference in, you know, uh, the amount of plays he played because we've been rotating guys through there anyway. But uh, Ellis has brought some leadership. Ellis has been a consistent guy. We thought he earned the right to be the starter. Yes, just following up on Josh, uh, was last week in terms of his, uh, it, it just looked like he was tentative or, or rusty, or was it a mental thing? Was it a physical thing or, or both? Well, I'm sure it was a little bit of both. Um, as I said Saturday, you know, us not playing him was more of a coach's decision. You know, I thought after he came off the field, the one series early in the game, I, I didn't really feel like uh, he had his confidence, and that was my impression. You know, I spoke with Josh yesterday, and uh, I, I feel like he's in a good place. Um, he felt like he, sh he could have come back in, and, and as we've talked about, you know, we're going to give him every opportunity to, to, to take the reps this week, and we'll create the competition if Piggy's available, and we'll start and play the guy that gives us the best chance to win this week. Coach, uh, you obviously, uh, maybe you thought to go 12-0 uh, and 0 this year, but do you, do you see progress in what is obviously a rebuilding uh, stage here and, and stage one of this rebuild. I mean, despite what's happened the past six weeks or so, you feel progress has been made for the future. Yeah, of course. I think anytime you develop your roster and you get a chance to play some of the young guys we've played and, you know, again, talking and even referring to the offensive line as one of the places, you know, the, the, the two main areas for us to develop depth and find ways to, to improve is on both sides of the offensive line and the defensive line, especially in this league. And, uh, you know, on the offensive line, I thought we made some uh, strides with some of the guys that have played a lot of plays early. Uh, this year, defensive line-wise, this week I thought we took a step back, and I'm hoping that we can uh, get those things corrected and, and, and again, get back on the right track. But you know, I mean, we're in year one of, like I said, a developmental stage of our program. And um, sure, we want to win every week, and that's our goal, and we continue to work to put together game plans to give ourselves a chance to. But there are small battles within the game that we need to continue to show our players where we've taken some steps forward as we develop the standards and how we want to play the game. And Mike, uh, getting back to the, over here, getting back to the quarterbacks. <laughs> um, obviously, the injuries have been an issue here over the last month or so. How important, short term and long term, is just achieving some kind of continuity at that position, given the, the difficulty that's been there, not just this year but in, in the past. Yeah, it's always important. I mean, um, I think that's the one position where in a perfect world you want a guy that is your guy. I mean, you build around them. You build around his skill set. And I think because of some of the injuries and some of the things we faced, uh, you know, having to play a couple of guys now, very fortunate that we've had the ability to play guys like Piggy and then even Tyler DeSue, uh last week along with Josh. So, uh, again, yeah, I think it's really important for us uh, to try to find a guy if we can. But again, we're going to always do what we need to do to win the football game. And uh, if that's Josh, then we'll play Josh. If we feel like Piggy gives us the best chance, then we'll use Piggy. And even now with Tyler uh, getting some game reps, uh, he'll have his chance as well as if he gives us the best chance to win.